Hello, uh, welcome to another live show. Uh, today I wanted to um, start by uh, addressing some questions we have received and uh, or maybe perhaps mainly a comment uh, which is that um, with Sparkle we are um, with this uh, live stream actually we are uh, or I personally am not too organized and uh, that's kind of the whole point of, uh, of the live stream is to answer your questions and to show you that uh, everything happens uh, in, uh, in real time with no um, rehearsal or preparation. So the time I spend doing this is the same time you would spend doing it yourself. So it includes research, it includes uh, building a site at a uh, regular pace and uh, figuring out things. So I'd love to actually um, interact with you more so please ask questions and uh, we can uh, uh, do things together so today I I, I think uh, a popular um, topic is uh, just showing how you build the sites uh, from scratch and sparkle and uh, so how you recreate a layout you've seen uh, um, on the web and inspiration layout and uh, so I'll, I'll start from that just uh, plain research let's uh, go you know google search for uh, clean photography website design for example this is uh, something which uh, could be interesting last time we we built uh, a restaurant website um, so we can you know pick any of these they're very geometric and uh, and clean. Uh, some of the things I'm looking for are uh, just uh, you know big typography like this. This one says clean and simple. Um, any of these could work. So I don't know. Let's try building like. Uh, of course, we need to find a photography. And so if you're making a photography website. Uh, Presumably you're a photographer or you have uh, um, your client's uh, pictures. So I'll, I won't even you know, do too much work here. Just uh, uh, take a screenshot of this to my desktop. And so there's a screenshot. And uh, so the next step could be researching for some photography on Pixabay, which is uh, the stock site we use actually another one is on splash Spixabay is built into sparkle and uh, uh, for stock photography in case you haven't seen this uh, you in a new document when you add uh, an image you can switch this to Pixabay image and uh, let's see so this is a uh, you know See, this is already an image we could use, uh, which uh, some in some way similar to our inspiration image. Um, you know, why don't we start with this? I deleted it because uh, I want to use it as a, a background image, so as a white box image. So I have to uh, create a white box. So my image will cover the whole box and. Uh, so this is an advice I give every time because I see it frequently on websites we are sent is uh, you since your image will fill the whole box set the box to you know same color as the background or transparent uh, this ensures that when the website is loading uh, the background shows uh, uh, something meaningful instead of showing you know a, a default uh, uh, you know this uh, blue gray color uh, so we have to select the image here. Let's go back to that one. Uh, let's see, stretch it. So maybe um, we should uh, see. Maybe it won't work. We can uh, play around with the alignments here to make it go on a side. So I said it stretch to fit, which means the image will be resized to the. Um, box height and uh, and then I move the alignment uh, to the right and uh, otherwise you can play around with that 
So this could be somewhat similar to the inspiration here. Um, one thing to note about um, image use when you use stock photography, see it, uh, it's written in the text here. What this means is uh, uh, stock photography is usually uh, something you can use, uh, uh, but you need to have uh, um, a model release if you have uh, recognizable people or brands, or for example, the Tour Eiffel is a, is a brand that will actually go after people with websites who put an image of the uh, Tour Eiffel. So you need, uh, sometimes you need licensing, sometimes you need a release. So unless, uh, or even if actually you have taken the photography yourself, you might still need a license. So in particular with uh, stock photography, if there's recognizable people and you use it for a commercial site, uh, well, you should be careful about that. Anyway, in this case, it's just uh, you know a sample. So presumably, uh, your f client uh, photographer or yourself as a photographer have uh, a model release for the image and uh, so you can use it for your own use. So let's see, keep this around here. Uh, so this image has like a, a gray background. In my case, uh, I don't want to put, you know, retouch the image or anything. I don't want to cut out the transparency right now. So. I'll just uh, kind of invert the colors and make the top section gray and the bottom black like this one and keep this white background here. So this will become some, see if we, oops, if we edit this. Uh, make this, this gray lighter. So this is another source of confusion, which I can briefly explain. The color wells here, um, they're synchronized across the elements that use them. So if I use uh, another block, another box here and set it to the same gray color, if I change this gray color, you see it. The color well changing makes uh, all the elements using it also change. So if you want to have different colors, uh, you should use a different color well. Um, if it's a color you use just once, you can use the current color, and so that's not synchronized with everything with anything. That's uh, always different. This is all in the documentation, and uh, but it's a common source of uh, of uh, confusion for some users. So uh, worth mentioning. So let's make the bottom here black, like in the example. So this is just like don't like 100% black, so let's make it slightly lighter. This is just roughing out the website, so let's put our, see what this one says, fashion photography exposed. Can use that. Okay, so um, presumably, you know, in, in this image here, perhaps the white section up here was just, was not part of the design itself, and I added it here. Uh, we can, you know, think about what we add here. Probably the main part of the website of so the message is going to be this section here. Uh, so it's worth uh, um, sorry. It's worth uh, uh, setting here as a title so that. Uh, it gets uh, proper search engine treatment. Uh, so fashion, oops, I don't want to make it uppercase. Fashion photography exposed. That's a good title as any. Uh, so if you, by default, the title uh, style and sparkle will have the H1 HTML tag. This uh, H1 here means that this is the first header on the page and it's something which is relevant in uh, search engine optimization terms because uh, um, you know Google and uh, other search engines uh, will look for information uh, matching user query, giving more prominence uh, to the title here, uh, to the description, and also to the address of the page. So the anything that is in here, which is your website address. So, you know, this means that if you make a website which you want to aim at a specific keyword, like, uh, you know, 
wedding photography in London, you should uh, consider having a domain name with that uh, name here. Um, and uh, another part, which is part of the web of the page address, is the file name here. Of course, you cannot change the home page because that's uh, uh, web server constraints. This should always be index.html HTML and uh, won't be visible. But you could uh, perhaps have a page. Suppose your website name, your web address is uh, uh, website photography here, and you could have a page which is uh, not the home page, but the regular page, which is uh, yep, which is. Uh, London, perhaps. So, you know, that would be a very strong uh, um, keyword uh, for, for Google searches. Um, in our case, uh, you know, what you could have is uh, fashion photography exposed. Um, there is uh, um, a number of uh, uh, words or letters here which is suggested, which is uh, I forget, around uh, 35, I think. So I should check this and uh, anyway, it's easy to find. Um, so makes sense uh, that you use the space here. Uh, you know, you could put any separator, a dash or, a, you know, a pipe uh, or, you know, this bar character uh, and put something else that works uh, against your keywords. So maybe, you know, the best uh, photography around here. Uh, that's not very specific, is it? But anyway, you'll get the, get the meaning of this. So now um, let's uh, go back to our title and uh, style it a little bit. In this case, uh, what font you use is uh, indifferent for search engine purposes, but of course, from a design point of view, you want to have uh, something that works there. So let's, uh, let's look for uh, a new font here. Um, you could install your, your own custom web font, assuming you, you have a licensed one, which you like to use there. Uh, but what you can use is uh, perhaps uh, search the title category, which is, uh, you know, the more punchy decorative fonts that work at uh, big sizes. So, uh, you know, any of these, uh, let's see, I'm looking for something which is uh, similar to this one, so uh, sans serif and uh, a bit uh, boxy and squared out. Um, I don't know, that one seems, uh, this is also a bit fun. It has these uh, uh, characters like this. I mean, fonts are, are always, uh, uh, I mean, they're their own discipline and uh, it's not something that's easily taught, not by me anyway, so uh, worth, uh, the research. Uh, I'll try with this one, which is slightly, looks uh, slightly condensed, but uh, can work in this case. So Anton here, and that's, uh, so this, uh, I want to make this all caps, but instead of retyping it, I'll, I'll change it from here. So make it all uppercase. Uh, why is this different than typing it uppercase? The difference is, well, in the first place, it's easier, you know, to switch back and forth. And uh, the other thing is that while this is a visual uh, characteristic, a visual trait, so the text will appear uppercase, but uh, search engines will not see it as uppercase. They'll see the regular um, text as you typed it here, which uh, makes the search results look more pleasing. If it was all uppercase in search results, it would appear to be screaming uh, in, in a regular font. In our case, it's uh, pretty big. So um, now you'll notice that I switched this to uppercase, but it's not visible. And that's because while you're editing, uh, you cannot actually preview it as well. Otherwise, you don't know that you're typing in lowercase characters. So as, as soon as you click outside, it will go back. So that's fine. I mean, we we can oops, we can uh, preview it anyway. So let's make this centered, and then I'll make this uh, lower one a bit bigger here. Um, it's a weird font behavior here. Okay, so. Perhaps uh, reduce uh, the line height slightly, the leading. 
Okay, so that's uh, makes sense. Um, these uh, angles here are something which you probably should uh, build uh, from uh, in a graphic way, but uh, you know, for just for kicks, we can try building them using boxes. So I'll just make a border. This is probably you know not the best idea, not something you, you generally do, but uh, it's okay just for exercise here for fun. So make these a uh, dark gray. Dark gray. So that's uh, a box up here. Let's start looking at this in uh, preview. Uh, so I have a different version of Sparkle running there. Okay. Let me close this and open it again real quick. Okay. Just like I had different versions of Sparkle installed. Not a surprise on, uh, on my Mac. Um, so uh, we can now check this out in preview. And uh, let me go back here. There you go. So this isn't uh, working exactly like we would want. I think there's uh, some something odd going on here. I think this, this font here is uh, a bit uh, tricky. So in this case, uh, you should generally eyeball the font and see how it works. It's uh, some fonts work worse than others. So this one uh, is working as intended. So we can, you know, put that here. So one thing you'll notice is that uh, um, the image here is, uh, even though it's, it's uh, constrained within uh, the bounds, it's, uh, it's inside a full uh, width container. So this means that in the browser, uh, if, you, if you shrink uh, the browser down, the, the image will move. You have less control over, over the placement. And the reason for that is that uh, the image that is contained in this box scales up and down in a non-proportional way because it uh, it will scale to fill the edges actually in this case i set it to fit so it makes sense that it's uh, pinned uh, to one edge and uh, it's not quite moving exactly like that one so since there's a clear background one option here would be to remove the full width and uh, what this would do is it would make it uh, very easy to control uh, the edges are white, like the background, so right. This this would make the image and the text move uh, together, and uh, so we could uh, say scale the text down a little bit. It's weird behavior, uh, so like that, and uh, let's live with this for now. Okay, so now. You know, you have uh, the image, the text not uh, covering the model here. Uh, so let's make another few of these. I can uh, switch the borders around uh, real quick. Uh, so add this and uh, remove that. Or perhaps just make, you know, make it slightly different, make just a uh, so remove the top one, make just the top left and bottom right, uh, bottom border here. Okay. Uh, <coughs> it's not looking exactly like our, our her inspiration but it's still like a clean uh, photography uh, page uh, so next up let's say we have some um, portraits here so why don't I, I go ahead and uh, you know just look for um, more pixabay images so let's say I'll look for a portrait and uh, 
set some, uh, you know, oops, fill. So this is a case where I'd like to perhaps align images on a grid. So let's say I'll make a few square images and uh, this is where the range inspector helps out. So it's 233 pixels and I'll make, uh, uh, I'll just duplicate them over like this. Oops, uh, looks like I uh, have an odd column here. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I'll ignore the grid and just uh, distribute them. This uh, format bar I can here, you know, makes equal spacing between elements. So, and so now I can go back to the image and, uh, you know, this is uh, again, uh, you know, just loading uh, random stock images. Uh, uh, presumably uh, you, could, you should use uh, uh, images you have licenses over. Um, <coughs> Uh, an alternative to using uh, individual images like this, of course, is to create a gallery. So um, I can show you that, for example, uh, for photos, I probably showed this already. Just uh, drag the photos over into Sparkle, say add gallery, and uh, there you go, you get an image slider. So this could have uh, your, your portraits or whatever inside. Um, you know, the difference here, it's a matter of choice. Uh, our gallery component currently isn't uh, too flexible. So if you want uh, this kind of thumb thumbnail layout, you will have to do the manual thing for now. Uh, the gallery is, uh, is you know, a r real quick way to uh, create uh, interesting uh, interactive content in a way and uh, it also packs lots of images in one place but uh, um, it doesn't show you you know all the thumbnails at the same time it can show you thumbnails uh, just that needs uh, it's inflexible in some ways so it needs to have at least five images in it to show thumbnails uh, this is a kind of limitation that we will be addressing so I just made the page a little longer here so that we can go on. Here, in this section here, we would uh, presumably uh, design a, a small menu. So, you know, well, I guess one way is just to add uh, a menu. So I'll add a menu component like that. What I generally do is, you know, put the, uh, make the menu real big and make the background transparent here. And then I uh, have to play with the font a little bit. This is a Lotto is a clean font, which is okay. Make the font slightly bigger. So uh, the reason for uh, making the box that big here, even though the, the, the background is transparent, is because on mouse hover, it uh, gets colored and this is where we control the, the color. So. Let's say on hover, we can make the background, uh, you know, be grayish like that. And the text uh, uh, becomes uh, dark. Okay, so let's see how that works in preview. So that's, that's what happens. That's the reason for making the menu box real big. Uh, so, you know, we can add um, some other items here like uh, uh, portraits and then something like uh, about me and now we can uh, stretch the menu almost all the way across and i can just uh, reposition it and use the automatic snapping to make it uh, aligned um, now these uh, new items I added, this, uh, so this is another source of confusion and uh, I want to explain. Uh, so when you have the auto add pages uh, checkbox turned on, what happens is uh, that every time you add a page to Sparkle uh, via the plus button, what happens is uh, uh, the menu system will add a new item here. Like this first home uh, item here has been added automatically. Uh, what happens is these items are not, uh, you cannot change them. You can only change their text, but uh, um, 
they link to the page uh, they are generated from, right? So if I were to add another page, like for example, a page you should have on your site is a privacy policy, um, a new privacy policy item would appear in the menu. Now, since I have designed the menu uh, to be exactly like I want it here, I probably turn off the auto add pages at this point so that adding a new page here will not disrupt it. So I add a new page and uh, nothing happened here, which is what I want. Now, portraits, if you see a difference between the home item here and the portraits item here, is uh, this on-click section. So these are actually manually added items, so they have uh, configurability here. Uh, my portraits will, in this case, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, gearing up to be a single page website so it will be to the same uh, page here the home page and uh, I will get the uh, browser to scroll down so I can create a scroll location and I want to scroll you know down to here perhaps and call this uh, scroll location uh, portraits so this too becomes becomes part of your page address uh, we can see this in preview um, now, by default, Safari hides the address of the page uh, or, you know, shows only the domain name. Uh, it's, uh, I think, a good thing that, uh, you know, website uh, people browsing websites shouldn't actually care too much about uh, the page address, perhaps. Um, as uh, someone who, uh, you know, you should probably care about it instead because, uh, as mentioned, uh, anything that goes in here is relevant for search purposes. So what we want to do is uh, go to the preferences and uh, turn on the show full website address in Safari. This is uh, a good thing. And in this case, when I click on portrait here, it will, ha, it doesn't show. Okay, <laughs> so never mind. Anyway, generally, like uh, if I type it here, portraits, uh, portraits, portraits, it sc should scroll here. Okay, never mind, this is not working. Anyway, uh, the name of uh, the anchor, as you see down here, is part of the page. And so that's the way in which you can link to a page and have it scroll to a specific position directly. Um, about me is currently not linked, so it doesn't do anything. And uh, we can do that as well and make that also um, a new scroll location further down on the page. Uh, so place it somewhere down here, perhaps. Um, so this is uh, a new section of the page. Let's uh, make up uh, you know, a vanity section so let's find a photographer let's find a, so photographer here and uh, you know some text next to it mentioning saying something about a photographer um, I didn't do you know, my inspiration kind of ended at the top of the page here. There are many more things that you could do. Uh, so perhaps, you know, we can uh, consider doing some layout like that with a kind of a tinted background, which helps uh, visually separate sections of the page. When you're scrolling down, it kind of uh, puts you into a different, uh, um, you know, you when scrolling down on a page you feel like you have uh, switched to a different context so it makes sense to do and these kinds of things of course are very beautiful if you have uh, the imagery to do that if you have uh, very clean photography with uh, plain backgrounds you can uh, perhaps build something like that um, see this clean and simple layout is uh, pretty ordinary not too hard to build um, these are interesting kind of images where, you know, you pick uh, uh, an image where the top or the bottom blends into the rest of the website. So you can kind of fade 
the, the sky into the into the rest of your your website here uh, see that one similar this has like uh, the, the clouds becoming the same background white that's uh, always fun to do um, I think there's a lot of inspiration you can get by you know just uh, randomly looking for um, Google images without necessarily using any of it just you know to figure things out and rebuilding it in Sparkle is uh, really quick and uh, as I've showed uh, if there's anything you you know you're in doubt or you would like to know more about just uh, please ask in the chat and uh, it's uh, or uh, after the live show you can you know comment on the video or send us an email and we'll figure it out so the about me we didn't test oops i saw it has the anchor tools though so we changed that the anchors are clickable and selectable and changeable so this we call uh, about me um, now the uh, live show is uh, generally the grand finale is uh, when we turn this into a mobile page as well. Uh, so let's uh, talk a little bit about that. Um, what we have here is uh, a single uh, device layout. What this means is uh, if you, you can see it in preview as well. If you, you know, if you don't actually ever or almost ever do this in a browser. But uh, if you want to test how the page would behave on different devices, you can uh, make this narrower and uh, see nothing happens here. The, 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 the page is fixed. That's because we have just one layout currently. Um, so um, thanks for the questions. I'll just quickly finish through with this and then we can talk about that. Um, so what we do here is uh, we add a new device layout. Um, what, what happens here is when you add uh, a layout and only when you are adding the layout, not later, uh, Sparkle will resize anything that's on the page for the specific size. So 960 pixels wide is the default desktop size. Uh, portrait smartphone is uh, 320 pixels wide, which is, you know, like the original iPhone uh, iPhone 4s, I guess, and then earlier, uh, or 5s as well. Uh, this is a third of the size, so scaling everything down means that, you know, a 30 pixel font will become 10 pixels, but a 12 pixel font will become 4 pixels. That's clearly not something you should work with, not something you should uh, leave as is. It's intended to be further edited. and. Uh, but that's uh, generally a, a one pass thing you have to do. So I'll um, add the 320 pixels wide layout. Um, I don't need to add the other ones and I'll show you why in a minute. Basically, they are uh, automatically sc scaled up and down by the nearest device. So if I have uh, 320, uh, the 480 will be a scaled up version of 320 and it will kind of work. So now what we need to do here is make this a little larger. You have to imagine uh, uh, these two sidelines as being the edges of your phone. So this is uh, kind of uh, small text here. Um, so we'll start by making this uh, bigger and uh, you know move stuff down a little bit. Uh, I didn't actually put a, a real text here, so I could just leave it like that, but uh, you would resize the font. There's uh, other videos where I did this. Um, the gallery would probably make sense to make it edge to edge like that. And, uh, you know, if even if you make different shape pictures, um, oh, I shouldn't forget the scroll location. Even if you make different size pictures, Sparkle will generate different images for mobile, so they will uh, work properly. And uh, portraits, you know, in this case we have a uh, few, so I should probably, this is a uh, Kind of an annoyance here in circle you have to move stuff down all the time and uh, this is something we are aware of and uh, so move stuff down and move these down now i have this image uh, which is kind of the size i want so i can select that first and then the others and then click these uh, same width same height and they'll you know they'll be scaled up so we can kind of tile them like that for now and uh, 
make this a bit more prominent. Uh, the solution we can have here for the menu is to just turn the menu into, you know, the mobile hamburger menu here. Uh, so we can do that. Uh, what happens now is the background here doesn't quite work. Uh, so this is tricky and uh, probably the best solution here would be because I made the background transparent, you see. So probably the best solution here would be to um, uh, make a separate menu item, menu element because uh, the background color of items is not uh, device specific. So if I, well, actually uh, this is on black. So this is kind of a hack, but if I switch back here to the desktop layout, uh, this is black. So if I change their color, you know, the background color of menus of items here to black, or what was it, black right here? No, it's actually black. So it's uh, the slight off black black. Um, nothing changes here, but if I switch back to smartphone, now they have a nice background here, so that kind of works. Um, another trick here is that, uh, in fact, perhaps uh, I might not need this black bar here. You know, it, it's nice on desktop. I can think I can probably do without here. So I'll just, uh, you know, turn off this show on this device. So this box here is uh, still the same box on, uh, on, uh, my, on my desktop device, but on smartphone it's hidden. Um, if I want to see hidden items, because the the box is still here, actually, I can turn it back on. This is, uh, you know, kind of a mind-bending thing. You have to always think if you're seeing hidden elements or not. And this is a more real preview. This is, uh, you know, what you actually have uh, on the page. So let's make the better preview. And I can move at this point, you know, the the menu, I don't know, somewhere up here, perhaps. Uh, this isn't quite working out as I like it to, but, uh, you know, kind of selection tricks here and uh, moving this around. Uh, yeah, I'm not too happy with it, but it's not worth uh, too much time right now. So, uh, assuming there's some text up here, make this taller and so on. So now, Let's assume this is, uh, is fine. It's uh, it's not too nice. No, let's, let's improve it a little bit. You can uh, make the image uh, stay there, and uh, let's see, make that text bigger. See, it got down to seven pixels, which is not good. And this goes like that, more or less. Oops. So this became uh, upper uppercase and it uh, pushed out. Okay, there it is. Okay. That's kind of working a little better. Um, so if we go now, see if I open the devices pop up, um, uh, let's turn this on. So I, I want to show this is a default show on the current device. So I go to preview. I'm seeing what a smartphone layout would be. Um, this could actually be improved a little bit, the menu, if I remove the spacing between items and make the items, you know, let's say 320, 320 here, just like, just as wide as, uh, this is actually a fun effect here, <laughs> showing the eyes, and then make the font size of the menu slightly bigger, so this becomes, you know, sort of like uh, uh, a big, uh, covering menu here. Um, so the anchors still work. So this is the portrait section and this is the about me section. Um, it's not scrolling all the way down because the page is not long enough here, but uh, if the page was longer, it would scroll on to, to here. Um, also, smartphones aren't this tall in proportion to their width. So you can, you can, you know, kind of fix that by adding a footer area below. Um, so I'm, I'm just seeing the current device here, which is, uh, you know, I'm editing the smartphone. Uh, to see what happens with different screen sizes, you can turn off this. Uh, this is another kind of mind-bending trick because uh, you might be changing something here and you don't see anything changing here, right? Because uh, the browser is showing all layouts at the same time, so now it's showing uh, your desktop device 
uh, but you're in the smartphone device, so you know you move this two pixels down and you don't see anything happening there. Uh, so you kind of have to, you know, be aware of this and turn on the current device editing if you, if you expect the preview to reflect exactly what you're doing. But what you can do now, if you show all devices at the same time, is uh, uh, see what happens when uh, the layout switches. So now Sparkle generated a multi-layout uh, website that is uh, auto-switching from desktop to smartphone. Um, of course, that's uh, not great for, uh, you know, if, for tablet users or if you have a very, very wide screen like, uh, oops, like uh, you know, we can, in Sparkle, we can go up to layouts that are 1200 uh, pixels wide. Um, so what you do now is you add, you add all the other layouts and uh, 480 will be a scaled up version of 380. See, it looks just like 380, but it's a bit bigger. And uh, 768, which is uh, like a portrait iPad, uh, or you know, when you have a, a big screen iPad and you do the multitasking thing, you can also have uh, this this resolution at times. And then you add uh, the wide desktop PC as well, and um, they're all scaled up and down. So if I go back to Sparkle now, and uh, I mean to the preview. And I am showing all devices because preview current device is off. Uh, what I can do now is uh, simulate what different devices would see. So this is the 1200 pixel wide layout. This is the desktop layout. That's the tablet layout. And that's the 480 pixel wide. So it's uh, like the landscape smartphone. And so your website is uh, switching between layouts, you know, it's not fully fluid. Uh, you don't have text reflowing, but what you do have is you have uh, precise control of where everything is on a page. You just have to preview five sizes and you know your website is fine. Uh, you don't have any unexpected uh, overlapping texts or you know overlapping uh, stuff on the page. Um, so, uh, with that in mind, let's see the questions. Um, is it possible to set a side wide background uh, like a pattern instead of setting it for every page? John asks. Uh, unfortunately, that's not currently possible. Uh, it's definitely something we we want to find a way to add. Um, next question again from John is uh, when I copy an element that is set to back on one page, does it not automatically go back when pasted? Um, Unfortunately, pasting always uh, places uh, items on top, so um, that's uh, I see where that could be useful. Um, it would be kind of unexpected if an element went all the way back. Also, if pages have uh, different stackings of uh, you know text boxes, images, whatever, uh, Sparkle wouldn't really know where to paste it in the back. I mean, if it was uh, all the way back in the background, uh, yes, but otherwise, uh, I'm not sure how. On the other hand, if it's all the way back, it's easy to just, uh, you know, click the back arrow and, uh, um, I mean, the send to back and it will go there. Um, let me get a second to Charlie's question. Uh, what do you recommend for adding a blog into a Sparkle site? So, um, Blogging is uh, a common question for our support, as you might imagine. Unfortunately, we don't have a great answer that is uh, entirely uh, Sparkle-based. Um, what you need to do right now, what we do for our own blog, is just uh, you know have an index page somewhere and uh, uh, say this is uh, you know I, I just call this a blog and uh, add uh, a new item here and uh, add a new page with the blog entry. It's uh, not ideal, but uh, works when you don't post too often and if you don't want all the uh, fancy blog features like uh, user comments and uh, RSS feeds. Uh, clearly, this is something we are interested in adding. I I'm, I'm, can't really comment on when that will happen, but uh, we're hoping soon. Um, about uh, John's uh, further question, can I customize distance between a bullet point and a line of text? Um, so, 
uh, see how that works. If I have some text here, or let's start it from scratch. One, two, th three, four, and make this a list. Um, this distance here, uh, I think, cannot be currently customized, but is proportional to the font size, uh, essentially. So, yeah, no, you, you cannot. You can change uh, the indentation if you select these and make them. Oh, that's something different. You can change uh, how much that is, but that's, uh, again, the distance uh, to the edge of the text box. Uh, so, thanks for uh, joining our uh, live stream again and uh, talk to you next time.